Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Untitled Reviews. This being a show where it's about TV shows that are dramas. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Kung Fu. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So, obviously, Russell is making moves. Obviously, he's getting uh, D.A. Hughes to bring in an asset. Luckily, Evan ended up, you know, with Nadia's help, stumbling upon, like, what she was up to. And so... Now with this information, him and Nikki stake it out and find out that Russell is bringing in a whistleblower named Fitz, who, interestingly enough, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that's the same actor who played Boston in uh, Blind Spot. I was like, hey, uh, but he's a whistleblower that is basically going to take down like he has like he ended up amassing a lot of information that will end up taking down a whole bunch of tech billionaires and millionaires, kind of like a lot of shady stuff that went down in Silicon Valley. But then the ultimate question then becomes, why does Russell want that research so much? Jumping ahead a little bit, we found out that it turns out fifth, the research revolves around uh, Jacob Sloan and a society that he built way back when, which is obviously like how integral this all is, that kind of obviously Sloan was connected to the bell back then, and now the bell's coming back full circle, and a society that he built that is made up of the rich and powerful, that's been kept alive this entire time, there's an inner circle to this enclave, and that's what this research is about, is, is exposing all of them. And it turns out what Russell wants from them is, I guess, to activate, to get the specific sound, or maybe like, because it seems like there's a companion piece to the bell. There is the mallet. Now, whether the mallet's just, I, mean, I guess it must be a custom made mallet to make it so, because a certain frequency has to be made by the bell for it to enact its power. So the question then becomes like, is the mallet specialized so that it will hit in a certain way that resonates with the bell? Because it seems like there's three pieces. The, um, the stones themselves, the bell, and potentially this mallet. And I guess, like, the Enclave has been keeping the mallet the entire time. It's just been passed down amongst them. And that's what Russell wants from the Enclave, while he's trying to get this information and research about them and what they've, like, what they hold on to. I wonder if this is the only kind of supernatural object they have. I'm curious, is the uh, Wang Zai, uh, Wang Zai uh, aware of this as well? Uh, of this mallet's existence and such. But, um... The episode was mainly about protecting uh, Fitz from um, uh, from Tan. And I love that Nikki immediately starts talking to Fitz. And he was like, she's like, right, why don't you know exactly? You're like, wait, you think you think Russell's in there. You should know if you wrote the book. But it turns out his girlfriend, as Naomi, ended up writing it. And he's the one that took the fall. In fact, they had the name published under his name so that she wouldn't suffer any ramifications for it. He took the fall for her because he loved her. And he knows, like, this truth needs to be out there. And he wanted to protect her. She's luckily out of the country. So that's why he came back instead. He took the fall because Russell's under the impression that Fitz is the one who wrote it. He knew exactly where it was because the guy that uh, they're exposing and stuff like that who's connected to the Encore and stuff he ended up deleting any digital copies that they might have so this physical copy is the only one so especially when you're dealing with like a tech billionaire who has who can make the internet his own you probably don't want to like have too many i mean you can't have too many copies of it so a physical copy is all they can rely on though and i really appreciate how they shot the like you know just jumping around a little bit like i love that sequence how they shot the action where like fitz is like hiding and he's hearing the fighting and he lifts up and you just see the fights in the hallway and just like every time he lifts up there's a new action sequence i like that um I feel like there was just like, especially when Henry was hitting that dude in the throat with the books, I was like, that just seemed extra brutal. But I, I just like how that, like, I just like how they shot that action sequence like that. I thought that was actually uh, pretty dope. Like, that entire fight sequence, like, out in the hallway and inside of, like, the library uh, part of it, I thought was pretty dope. Uh, when Nikki was threatening to burn the book, I was like, oh, that's not the real information. It's like she swapped it out and put a fake. It's like, no, she was really willing to take that chance. It's like, right, if we can't have access to it, it's fine. As long as Tan doesn't get access to it, it's fine. But luckily, sad, well, sadly, they ended up getting away with it. Fitz ended up leaving, but he does deliver all the information to Nikki later on. So luckily it works out. So Fitz is able to escape the country because regardless of him being a whistleblower that is also the complicated thing of like if you go depending on how you go about it you could uh, be breaking laws in the process of being a whistleblower that is kind of like the thing of like oh they say like two wrongs don't make a right but in that particular regard it's like right you have to do a little bad for the greater good because it's like yeah so 
Fitz is kind of wanted, so that's why he was like, yeah, we can't really bring the police in because I'm still kind of technically a fugitive, so I, I'm assuming he slipped out of the country, so, but, so, I, uh, you like to believe, like, okay, luckily, and Tan's not going to come after him now because he doesn't need him anymore, it's like, right, I got the research, I don't need to go after you, um, so that works out, so he probably gets to leave, like, he's going to have to sneak out of the country again and meet up with Naomi, at least they'll be together, at least, so, there's at least some silver lining to that situation, once again, the sad part is that Russell is now a step closer to enacting his plan, um, on the, um, Evan front, he is able to finally confront and take down his boss. But the thing is, it turns out she's not the evil person that you would think she is. Truth be told is, I mean, I think no one, especially when it comes to uh, Russell Tan, no one's ever 100% evil. Even his own daughter, it's like, maybe she's a little evilish. Kerwin, a little evilish. But it's like, no, it's mainly because he bred them to be that way. And I don't mean just like, I mean, he literally made them, he, he forged them into that. I guess is the word I should say instead of bred. He forged them into that. He made the siblings compete against each other. Other. He, you know, because Juliet's not all about this. When she killed that guy from the ones I like two up, ep two episodes ago, like it really affected her because she's she's done some stuff before, but she's never been responsible for killing someone. Like she's directly responsible for killing that dude. So I can understand on that regard of like you know, so like despite all that she buries down, like she has a little more heart than her dad does, but I'm sure over time, like that's getting squeezed out of her. Like, right. Cause unlike Kerwin, she's a lot more like their dad, but it's also cause once again, it's like the only way you get your father, their father's attention is by being like him. So, but so it turns out, um, DA Hughes did turn down Russell. It started with, Hey, he gave me a donation for my campaign. And then he started asking for more and more favors. I turned him down until I, until like the head of his security came. Cause when I went to pick up my children one day, Oh, I couldn't find them. And then also Russell's like security guy dropped him off. Like nothing happens. Like, so Russell made it clear he could get to my family if I didn't do what he wanted. And so it's like, right. No one's of, you know, that's how Russell does what he does by, bullying, extorting, and threatening people to get what he wants, um, and you think, I think at the end of it, Evan does feel bad for him, for, um, D.A. Hughes, and says, like, right, when it's all said and done, you'll be able to, um, like, if you turning yourself in first, it's gonna be good, we can, like, kind of get you a little bit of a deal, but, in fact, she's not gonna talk about Russell, she's gonna take the fall for everything, but Evan's like, no, 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 you could, like, you're not gonna say anything about Russell, and she's like, this system is built so that men like Russell Tan can get away with everything, like, if you're rich and powerful enough, you, you can literally get away with murder, I mean, he has, like, all that he's done, all, all the shady, terrible things he's been a part of, and D.A. Hughes is gonna take the fall, which Nadia's like, right, uh, D.A. Hughes never acted upon or turned in any of the information she had against you, so we can, yeah, you have a little bit of a dark cloud, which I did appreciate, like, him strolling in there, like, like, yeah, like, I'm about to take you down, D.A. Hughes, but now, once again, it's just like, right, she's just another, yes, she was a part of this, but she was just another victim, and now he's like, right, getting your job back, that's what you wanted from all this, and I, you see the look on Evan's face, it's, Part I think I think now he's probably seeing like right there's actually so much more I can do outside of this so I'm curious like what is he going to do is he going to try and um, uh, replace D A Hughes in that regard because I think there's only so far the the law can go because it isn't just about getting his job back it is about taking down Russell and I think she's thinking like right with your job back you'll be able to take down Russell but it's like yeah but being part of the system where a man like Russell can break the rules like I think. I think Evan's starting to wonder whether, you know, um, whether or not having, you know, um, a, a, full, a job in the law enforcement is going to be good enough to take down a man like Tan. So that's why I'm wondering, will he kind of do something more private, like a private investigator type of thing? Or like, how is this going to like play out for Evan? Because at the very least, it's like, even if he, even, I think there's a part of it is about a job, but the other part is, it's like, no, Russell Tan's still getting away with everything he's doing, especially because... Evan is aware on the more supernatural side of things of what Russell's got planned. So there's that angle to it. Uh, but then you tie in all these other angles to the episode too, where Jilon, uh turns out she was there two weeks ago when uh, with those, uh, I'm always going to butcher it. Is it uh, Jai Sao? The, the, the stones, she ended up taking one. I mean, her family is a guardian family, so obviously she would she would resonate with it. And I think that's interesting. You have Mia, who's born of both bloodlines. You have 
uh, Nikki of the warrior bloodline, and you have Jilan, who is a distant relative, relative but is of the of a guardian. Uh, God, I'm all, I'm almost forgetting how that like whole thing worked. It's like yeah, like she's like her family is a guardian family, so. Now it's a situation, like, I think that's probably going to be significant in that Jilan and Nikki will, once again, have to work together. More so, a more cooperative union than prior. Um, but, Jilan gets visited by the alchemist, and she's like, call me mother. And so, when the time comes, uh, Mia is enjoying life with the, the, the Shin family, and... But Jilan comes to break that illusion. It's like, cool, Nikki hasn't told you the truth. And that's where we get into the rub of it. Because at the beginning, like, Nikki hasn't really slept because of what the alchemist told her. It's like, she doesn't want to believe that about Mia because Mia has a choice. And Henry's like, maybe you should tell her, but Nikki's reluctant. But then Nate, uh, Henry brings up a good point. You didn't like it. P uh, Pei Ling knew who you were, that you were of the warrior bloodline. She knew you were a warrior and said nothing to you in those three years. Then there's also, he didn't cover it, but like Nikki also found out her mom contorted and like twisted her life to follow that, like took that opportunity, like the path her life could have gone down. Her mom pushed her down a certain lane because she knew what her destiny held. And so I was like, right, even with those experiences, Nikki's reluctant to tell Mia the truth because it's like, right, there's so much going on. We need to take down Russell Tan. Let's focus on that. But also, so Nikki doesn't know how to properly handle that because she doesn't want Mia to have to carry such a heavy burden. But that and that's what Henry was saying. It's her choice, though. And Nikki took that choice away from her. In fact, she opened the door so that Jilan could come to her and manipulate her. Because it's not like Jilan has like the best of intentions because she's just using uh, Mia as a means to an end. Well, I, I don't know. Because obviously the alchemist is coming to her, but I think it's also because either that alchemist plans on taking over Mia's body and making Mia hers. It's like, oh, I'm going to live forever. I think she enjoys her being able to live forever, but at the very least probably manipulating Jilan as well as Mia. But Jilan probably also sees Mia as a means to an end of like, yeah, we're kindred spirits. But more so than anything, you have the power and everything necessary to kill um, Russell. That's what I need more so than anything. I need you to be... This hybrid weapon, first and foremost. Um, because everyone is a means to an end for Jilan, and that's the thing Mia doesn't know. It's like, I mean, it's like, right, she knows about, like, right, you killed your sis your own sister. It's like, well, dish do you know about the whole Kerwin thing of, like, she can't trust anybody because she assumes everyone's going to betray her and she has to make sacrifices for the greater, for getting what she wants. It's her revenge. But you see what happened in her path for revenge. What did she do? She killed her own sister for revenge. And that's the sad thing of Mia might end up doing that exact thing. She might end up killing her entire family for the sake of, you know, and because as a hybrid, it's going to activate and she's probably going to end up destroying everything around her, which is going to include this new family she found and her need, her, her seeking revenge, Jilan getting to her. But it's also on Nikki because Nikki didn't tell her the truth. It's like Nikki wants to tell her at the end, but gets distracted. And it's like if in that moment she had, even though Mia already knew if Nikki had told, talked to her then and there, like, right, there's something I have to tell you I haven't told you about. But Nikki kept putting it off, not realizing like what she did. And now it's like for Mia, you continue to lie to me. You had an opportunity. You could have told me then and there and you still haven't told me. So I think it's just making her resent Nikki a little bit more because now in her mind it's like, right, you do see me as a threat. You you don't believe, like all this stuff about you believe in me, we're family and stuff. It means nothing now that you know the truth. I'm a monster in your eyes, and but that's not the case, you know? But Nikki didn't have a chance to really explain that and that's just going to send Mia down that darker path. In fact, her potentially killing Russell might be the linchpin that like, set her down that path to being the hybrid either she's going to become like fully embrace like the evil that is the hybrid and then end up killing russell in the process and there's no going back because once you cross that line there is no going back like jilan will always be stained with the blood of everyone that she's ever killed it's not just one or two people like she's she's left a path of blood and death down her path of revenge you know and there's, you know, and it's not all of those people were bad people. What, I mean, her own sister, we, to be fair, she resents her sister because she blames her for their dad's death, that whole thing. And then you add in 
but she killed like guardians to get the weapons last season. So she's killed countless innocent people. And but Mia doesn't know Jilan's entire story. She probably knows part of it, but not all of it. And even if she did know all of it, maybe she's so driven by revenge of wanting to take down um, Russell, especially after last episode. She didn't see it herself because Nikki witnessed it, but she knows Russell, once again, wasn't just responsible for her mother's death, directly responsible. He pulled the trigger himself. You were almost hoping that the family circumstances throughout the rest of the episode would have kind of like hopefully swayed her in the right direction. And I think if Nikki had talked to her then and there at the end of the episode, it would have helped to have talked to her a lot sooner. But if she had at very least talked to her by the end of the episode, it probably would have been enough to nudge her in the right direction. But it's just like, right, Nikki was just avoiding having that hard conversation. And she's like, right, I'll talk to you later about it. But it's like putting it off is going to be a bigger issue going forward. Because Jilan is like, right, Nikki will never understand us because Nikki's never had to go through. I mean, technically Nikki has, but it's like because Nikki sought revenge against Jilan for her master's death. But she chose not to go down that path, and I think it was the better outcome, but we don't know what the ripple effect is going to be when it's all said and done when it comes to the path that Jilan is leading uh, Mia down. Because another part of this episode is about, you know, uh, the Shin family, like uh, the dumpling, the restaurant celebrating uh, 25 years of being open. And that's great and everything, but uh, Mei Li doesn't want to celebrate it. And Althea, Mia, and Nikki are all kind of working behind the scenes to kind of make that a reality and make that happen. And I love they're trying to be sneaky, but Mei Li catches them. And you understand where she's coming from because it's like, right, our success, we wouldn't have gotten here without the Changs or so many other people contributed to our business continuing to be where it is. And the sad news is she found out from uh, Jen this episode that the Chang, um, their uh, their uh, store is closing down, and that's been this common theme throughout the rest of the, throughout the season. I think Russell Tan has contributed to the gentrification of that neighborhood, and a lot of restaurant and, and not just restaurants, but uh, like businesses that have been there for so long are now closing down. And for mainly, it's like, how are we going to celebrate like us still standing while all these other people? She's like, I can't even look at these other like businesses that have gone under, like people we consider friends and part of our family. Can't even look them in the eye. It's like, how, how like if we were celebrating, who would be celebrating? And now Thea said, how about we shift it instead of just celebrating like the restaurant? We celebrate everyone that's played a role in it. Let's thank them for us being here. That you know, and it and I think it's a beautiful thing because it also ties into her her act her app about the community and stuff which she's going through issues right now no one's taking the opportunity to like the you know on her app I mean, I'm sure um, home dude is like a big reason for that and everything with Dennis he's trying to like hustle not that the family's um, his family's cut him off once again it's his dad but I'm sure like his mom maybe sides with um, his dad on that I don't know um, I'm curious where his sister stands in all of this too but she had been avoiding her employees because it's like, yeah, everything's kind of failing. And like, I can't even face my employees to tell them, like, right, my app might get end up getting all of this might end up getting dissolved in like a week. But uh, talking to her mom, she's like, you know, I can't hide away from, you know, all of this. So you don't hide away either. In fact, it ends up being this beautiful celebration that it's like, right, we are together, we will face the future together as a community, because like this beautiful community that's been built around is like, you guys helped us get here, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you, so it isn't just about celebrating us, it's celebrating, it's not just celebrating our family and our restaurant, this is celebrating all of us, this family, this community, we've been, and I thought that was a beautiful thing, and I think it's very reciprocal, like I said, with the uh, app that uh, Althea's uh, trying to uh, get out there, so... And another side of this episode is also the interesting revelations about Sebastian's past. I kept thinking, like, oh, he must be part of, like, the Wan uh, Zai, but turns out he's not. He's got a criminal past, which, to be fair, Henry does, too. But um, his situation is a little different because he's still reluctant to talk about it with Ryan. He's kind of pushing Ryan away because it's like, right, you have stuff you haven't talked about. And it turns out the person he was running into earlier in the episode was his brother. Was it Angelo? And it turns out his 
Sebastian tried to reach out to his family, but they want nothing to do with him because it turns out Sebastian went to jail for manslaughter. He it ended a bar fight turned sideways. He beat up a guy and the guy walked away. So Sebastian thought, oh, it's over. The guy died of a brain hemorrhage in his sleep. So, and Sebastian wanted to get away from that because I think that's why he probably avoided being around his family because his family looks at him as like, right, you're a murderer, kind of a disgrace to the family. So they kind of want nothing to do with him. So he's going all over the world, moving from place to place because he never wants to be fully tied down to somewhere because staying in one place probably would be like make you think too much because he hasn't had a home in so long. And obviously a lot of that changed the moment he started working for Ryan's parents. It's like, you know, he found this home and he leaves it up to Ryan to decide, like, you know, whether we become a thing or not, I completely understand whatever choice you make. And at the end, Ryan's like, right, it's a lot kind of thrown my way, but I know who you are now. And it is something I am willing to take a chance on. So now they're kind of a little more open. Obviously, Ryan still has his secrets, but it's like, yeah, the, the what they're kind of mixed up in is a lot to kind of throw someone's way. I don't even know, I don't remember how much Dennis know. I think Dennis knows knows now. I don't remember now, like, uh, maybe it was, it probably had to be, it had to be a last season thing of, like, filling him in about everything. I don't know if they still have. I don't remember now. Do let me know in the comments down below, do they, because I can't remember off the top of my head whether they filled Dennis in on about, in on about everything, so... Some interesting developments all across, uh, all around, but like I said, it's definitely going to be interesting to ultimately see... I mean, who uh, has, which member of the Enclave still ha has the mallet, and will they be able to get it before Russell? Because they now have copies of all that research, at the very least. They don't have it compiled in that book, but it's still, like, a lot of the stuff that let um, Naomi put together that um, dossier to take down the Enclave and stuff. So, we'll see how that plays out, where the... the um, Jilan and Mia thing goes as well as Ro, Ro the Alchemist is because I think I'm, I'm assuming I mean maybe I'm wrong I'm assuming by the end of the season Russell Tan's going to be removed from the equation I think he's going to be finally taken down but I think the Alchemist is going to rise as kind of the main antagonist or she's going to like roll into like the ending of this like I said maybe she possesses Mia's body and that's where the season ends or you know very much like a like, like a um, kind of like God what what's a um Michael finally getting Dean's body or Lucifer getting Sam's body type of situation. Um, the perfect vessel type of thing. Or maybe, once again, maybe that's not her end goal. Because her end goal was immortality. But being in a hybrid plus maybe the immortality might be what she's aiming, aiming for. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see where all of this ends up taking. Because I'm pretty sure Nikki and me are sadly good. And that's going to be the thing of will Nikki have to put Mia down? Uh... I think not. She, I think she'll be able to save and bring Mia back because her approach to things, because I think she, she handled things the wrong way in this, but just like Mia, like Nikki's growing and, you know, learning as well. And I think she's on the right path, whereas Jilan is down, continues to go down this darker path. And maybe, just maybe by the end of this, Jilan will at least try and redeem herself to go down a, a better path. We'll we'll have to wait and see how this plays. Will everything work out in the end, or will there be a tragic ending to this whole situation? Hopefully not, especially because you know Jilan made the point that Nikki might try to protect you, but there's certain things she can't protect you from your destiny. So we shall have, wait and see. But really, that's all I'm going to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and good. Bye.